the previous lecture, we just got a glimpse of buses, right? The various types of buses and uh, some aspects of buses we just saw in general. We will sort of continue the discussion on bus in this lecture also. Okay. Uh, first, I would take up uh, these uh, buses, you know, we were talking about the backplane bus and processor memory bus and I.O. bus. Let us just take a uh, look at that. For instance, uh, essentially we have this right processor, then we have this uh, memory and uh, we have many I.O. devices. So, normally the bus connecting these we will refer to as processor memory bus. But then, in the case of small systems, the whole thing may get sort of integrated, meaning on this bus itself, we may provide the necessary slots, so that the I O may be connected to that. Okay. Now, this is essentially to simplify the matters, like this you may have many. So, though processor memory is very much interconnected, you see that I O is also integrated with that. In which case, this particular bus will be there on the back plane itself, that is in the printer circuit form itself. Okay, on. So, that what you have is on the back plane, you have the necessary slots and uh, you would find a processor slot, you will find the memory slot that is the slot in which the processor board will go, memory board will go and you will also find the I O slots on them. Okay? So, generally that is what you have and uh, specifically uh, in uh, small uh, systems, this is what you have. Okay? That is essentially what you have is a back plane. Now, <laughs> as the complexity of the system grows, there may be necessity. Mm, there may be some necessity for separating this somewhat like this. You have the processor and you have the memory and what we have here is the processor memory bus. Okay. You can see that this processor memory bus, this will certainly be much faster than this. The reason? In addition to the processor memory interaction, this also will be supporting I O, is it not? And this will invariably slow down that. Good. So, processor memory bus you will have. Then, to this you uh, include the necessary interface circuit, then we call the bus adapter, okay? bus adapters. And using this bus adapter, you have another I O bus. Okay, you have the I O bus, and I O will be sitting on this on this bus specifically. Now you can see that the, the function of I O and the function of processor memory interaction have been separated. right? Now, like this you can have many bus adapters, okay? like uh, this particular one and you can have many I O buses also. Okay? But then you can see that if you go on adding a lot, then you are going to tap on to this processor memory bus and this could affect the speed of this. Okay? So, in such a situation then, what you might have is <coughs> say like this, a slight modification. So, you have the processor, you have the memory and so you have the processor memory bus as before. Okay? Then, instead of having many tappings on this, 
just how one tapping have the bus adapter on this okay and uh, how a yeah, back plane bus okay now this back plane on this back plane bus you connect the other adapters say another bus adapter like that and create an IO bus on which will sit the different IOs okay so instead of tapping on the processor memory bus what you are doing is you are tapping on the backplane bus and having I mean adding additional bus adapters and creating many IO buses okay so this is what you have this is processor memory bus will be short and fast then IO bus can be long and uh, need not be fast okay in fact uh, over wide range it will be but then you can have different types for catering for different types of devices you can have different types of AO buses and then do not tap too much on the processor memory bus they, this will act also like buffers okay good so and then have a backplane bus and have the necessary slots for these adapters and go on expanding so you can just see this is precisely what you have so earlier we had all of them on one this is how we started with our discussion no so one set of signal lines that is the bus processor memory io was connected oh, very much like this but then you can see that practical considerations make us go in for these different configurations good now that's about this arrangement good now we are talking about the synchronous and asynchronous bus okay now i'll throw some extra light on this process we would start with what is going on in an asynchronous bus we are only talking about a few specifically two handshake signals m sync and s sync right this is what we are doing it earlier now let us see i would uh, try to give the present the picture okay of the communication protocol uh, between the master and the slave so let us assume that the current master uh, there can be many masters okay even a device can be a master for instance when it is interrupting okay we will just assume cpu is usually the master and memory is always the slave okay memory is always the slave so you'll just assume that the, between processor and memory the uh, communication is going on let us just work out uh, for one uh, uh, thing that is the data transfer part you remember earlier i was uh, talking about data transfer and then uh, in parallel priority arbitration can go on is it not so first let us see what's going on during data transfer in fact uh, essentially i was introducing this while discussing the asynchronous bus okay now there there can be many signals uh, i'll start okay with one new signal we we'll call it as bus bc okay bus bc a master will remain as a master on a bus as long as it can assert that particular signal when we say bus pc asserted that means one of the masters there can be many said okay usually cpu is the master so we say the cpu remains as a master to become a master in other words 
a device must assert that signal and it will have to continue to assert that signal meaning hold the signal well logic level may be high you can also have negative logic and make it low does not matter that is why we say asserted hmm? the asserted just means it generates a signal it does not mean it is logical 1 or logical 0 it can be either. So, a master remains as master of the bus by asserting the signal bus B C and let us uh, say this particular data transfer is concerning read cycle easy for us huh, to go discuss. So, what it does the C P U asserts the bus B C and then it is uh, going to uh, say uh, since I said read okay so what it will do is the master will place the address on the bus hmm? address will be placed on the bus and then uh, uh, why not read that also okay okay let us uh, uh, give it separately okay they can go simultaneously i'll say it asserts the address on the bus what do you mean by asserting address on the bus? Basically, this means the master. Uh, shall we use this or for control? The master places the address on the bus. That's what it means. Okay. Uh, so I think we will resolve this uh, assertion and negation for control signal. Uh, the handshake signals. It's more meaningful. Okay address placed on the bus we will use the same terminology what we were using earlier placed on the bus then of course we know read okay read is a control signal read signal again placed on the bus okay read signal so let us say generate which is placed on the bus you remember the this thing we are earlier using it using the timing diagrams right try to recall it is somewhat like this agree that is we say ok assuming address we did it in the previous lecture suppose read at some time we say address is placed on the bus at time instant and then at some time say read is generated. So, what we are saying is suppose this uh, that is our usual thing right time axis. So, at T 1 address is placed on the bus at time instant T 2 read signal is generated ok that is what I am just putting it in the form of text here. Now, after it has done in fact, you can say that the time axis here flows like this in this direction that is time sequence. Hmm? First a master remains a master by asserting the bus BC signal and assuming there is a read cycle the CPU places the address on the bus and places the read signal on the bus. After this ok M sin is the control um, handshake signal. So, let us use the terminology asserted. Now, where is the need for this M sin or handshake signal? We, we briefly saw earlier. Now, let us see in detail. You have address, we said, the CP places address, and let us assume it is a 16 bit address essentially it is a 16 bit number placed on 16 different signal lines. Now, if you see the timing diagram at say at instant T 1 we say the address is placed, but who can give you the guarantee that address is placed exactly at time instant T 1, because there are 16 different signals on 16 different lines. So, some may have been placed a little earlier 
and some may have been placed a little later. So, actually something like a time bandwidth, this is what we are talking. Over this time, the signal may have been placed, where at the CPU end. Then you have the signals traveling down the line, you have the transmission line effects. Now, when it reaches the memory, we generally think it reaches immediately, right? The transmission line problem comes. Now, you can just see when we draw a timing diagram like this, we only talk about the logical aspect. So, when you start considering the physical realities, you find that there are a lot of nasty things that will have to be taken care of, okay? So, there is going to be some delay. And that delay is going to be different for each of those 16 address bits, right? So, assuming that for the given uh, set of signal lines, this delay, maximum delay is going to be say 40 nanoseconds, assuming 40 nanoseconds, then it is meaningful. Uh, of course, 40 nanoseconds by the time the address that is placed, all the 16 bits reach the memory end. Okay? At that time, that is, I said 40 nanoseconds, right? So, if this MSIN signal is generated 50 nanoseconds later, then it is assured that by the time memory sees this MSIN, the complete address all the address bits, right? the complete address is available at the memory end. So, in fact, this is ensuring, this signal is an additional signal which ensures that the valid address, when we say valid address, we mean all the 16 bits of the address, they are available at the memory end. So, on seeing MSIN assertion, remember MSIN is also another signal and generated by the master. It is very much like address signal or read signal or whatever. So, there is going to be some delay of this also, but that is fine. Okay? So, on seeing the MSIN assertion, so we can just say there is going to be some delay. On seeing MSIN assertion, now the slave response, okay? all the thing we have been talking about earlier is for the master. Now, we have got to write for the slave. Just uh, okay, slave that is the memory. On seeing MSIN assertion, the slave responds what? It basically sees some signals are there on the bus. Obviously, it will see the read signal and then it has the address on the bus. On seeing read signal, MSIN uh, and of course, MSIN, okay. on seeing the read signal, slave knows that a read cycle must be performed. In other words, he can say that MSIN assertion is a signal to the slave that master wants some specific thing to be performed. Now, on seeing MSIN, okay, the slave starts, rather response we can say, the slave responds and it will do whatever the master wants it do. What master wants the reading to be performed, from where? From the address location. So, we can say that memory responds with the data. So, we can say that on seeing MSIN assertion, data placed on the bus. Okay? Now, you must see, because it is a read cycle which we had assumed, the CPU places the address, the memory responds with the data. If it were a write cycle, the CPU will not only place the address, but it will also place the data and then it will generate the write signal. So, that is it. Right. So, on seeing M MSIN asserted, the slave 
does the job that is reading what reading from the memory okay and placing that particular data that is read on the bus and after it has done it sm is asserted okay that is the slave says well i have done my job so now let's go back mc in assertion is an indication that master wants something done now sc in assertion is an indication that the slave says that it has done its job okay now these signals must be negated or removed is it not let us see what is the sequence in which this particular thing proceed we saw that the mc in was asserted by the master and subsequently sc in asserted by the slave and mc in assertion is for indicating that master wants something done and sc in assertion is an indication that the slave says it has done what the master wanted right now specifically with reference to read cycle we saw that there is the address was placed read control signal was generated and in response to this by the master the slave was placing the data on the bus right and s in assertion uh, and then only it asserts this s in okay good now what is the master doing and then what is the slave doing subsequently because we had introduced two signals no such as uh, m sin and s sin they are they now remain asserted they have to be removed now on seeing s sin assertion by the slave the master knows that the valid data is available on the bus that is because of the read cycle we are talking about so we can say that uh, data strobed in that is the data valid data that is available on the bus is strobed in and what will it do after that the first thing is when uh, after it has read in the data the read control signal will be removed okay read signal removed okay earlier read signal was placed no now that's removed and uh, what about the address address can very well be there does not matter really okay read signal must be removed certainly and after that em sin that is a handshake signal will be negated i said the time flow is in this direction now mentioned it earlier so on seeing a sin assertion that is by the slave master responds by strobing in the data because the data is valid then it re removes the read signal and then it negates em sin now em sin negation is a signal to the slave that master indicates that whatever it wanted is over it has concluded agree now what did the uh, slave do earlier slave earlier was placing the data on the bus right so let us say slave responds by removing the data from the bus so we can say data removed now how it does let's not worry very much okay usually it is done by um disabling the output buffers in the uh memory okay data removed from the bus and it negates yes sin s sin is negated that is so on seeing mc negation slave responds by removing the data and then negating the s sin now m sin which was earlier asserted is now negated and subsequently s sin which was earlier asserted has now been negated now this s sin negation in fact 
is the signal okay for AC negation is a signal for all devices on the bus okay for all devices on the bus what that um, some we do not know what exactly it is some uh, data transfer cycle is completed okay some data transfer cycle is complete or concluded okay now we had assumed the read cycle so that's what it is is complete is completed that particular thing is over in fact in case the master that is the cpu wants to further okay go ahead with the data transfer then it has to continue to assert the bus because only when it asserts the bus the master will remain as the master okay so now you see bus pc asserted something mcn asserted then something done by the slave acn asserted and then some response by the master for acn then it negates mcn then the slave responds and it negates the SN. Now, SN is an indication for all devices on the bus that some data transfer cycle is completed and some other thing can start. Fine. Now, you can see how MCN and SN have been used. Now, assuming the master continues as a master, bus BC will, be uh, will remain asserted. Bus PC is another signal. Bus PC will remain asserted. On the other hand, at the end of this data transfer, if there is some other device waiting, okay, then that particular device will assert bus PC. And so, if that is the situation, we will see because something else must be said. But nevertheless, assuming that some other device is waiting to become the next bus master right then in that case we will say in that particular case okay the master will negate bus bc bus bc will negate bus bc is negated because that is how the master remained as a master it was asserting the bus bc now, by negating bus BC, the master relinquishes the bus. Okay, by negating bus BC, master relinquishes the bus in favor of some other device waiting on the bus. Now, the question what really decides which of these devices can become the next bus master? Okay. It's a very interesting question now. Can the master decide that it wants to remain a master all the time? Usually that is the situation. It can be, no harm. That is, it can in inhibit everything else, but then there will be some problem, <laughs> right? So, whereas this, whatever we had talked about holds good for the data transfer, okay? This is how we started, no? set for data transfer this is the protocol this is in fact the communication protocol okay now while this is going on in parallel to this okay for instance priority arbitrator can work and uh, decide in case some device is interrupting or in case some DMA controller comes up and indicate it wants a DMA transfer, okay, then it can decide which must be the next bus master. But this can, must go on in parallel way 
because the data transfer must go on and uh, you have a separate set of signals. For instance, some device, I will just say a device which is not the slave, okay. a device which is not the slave, it gets ready. Okay. Let us say gets ready and let us assume that this is going to what indicate this is going to be an interrupt driven mode in which case when the device gets ready it can generate the interrupt signal and let us say interrupt is asserted that is interrupt is an input to the processor. But the processor we know is busy doing some data transfer. You remember we have always said in the case of interrupt driven cycle, okay, interrupt driven mode, the processor is going to respond only at the end of the current instruction execution cycle, right? At the end of the current instruction cycle only it will do it, is it not? So, obviously, the processor cannot respond it is busy. In fact, it is the priority arbitrator which will accept the signal. Okay, this is one method of implementation, there can be other methods. This accepts the signal and it is possible that more than one device interrupts, in which case it will look into the priority of that and then among these devices which is uh, interrupting the processor it means among the devices which are ready and are ready to interrupt the processor, it will select the one with the highest priority and it will keep it rather it will select that particular device and keep it ready for the processor to complete its current transfer as indicated by the SIN and then when the SIN negation comes the device which has been kept ready as the next bus master will assert the bus BC. Okay? So, priority arbitrator will have to indicate at this point that th there is an next bus master, which in fact is an indication that the current master must negate the bus BC and a lot of things must be said here. Okay? At the end, okay, when the master the, the this one master involved in the data transfer that is the cpu is uh, relinquishing the bus bc okay a lot of things must be talked about here at the end of that on seeing a sin negation we don't uh, write it here uh, on seeing this a sin negation by the current slave the device which has been selected by the priority arbitrator to be the next bus master will assert the bus BC provided the previous bus master has negated that. I agree. Here a lot of things must be said. The interrupt request comes, the priority of the interrupt must be checked. Okay and then uh, so on so forth. There, there are many ways in which this can be done, okay? because the device itself is going to generate the interrupt at some, remember I was saying hardware priority, then there is a software priority and so on, all those things will have to sort it out and assuming and all this goes on when the data transfer is going on in parallel, can go on, which means basically you have a set of signal lines for the arbitration and another set of signal lines for the data transfer, otherwise it is meaningless, is it not? So, in other words, the priority arbitrator is, is a hardware by itself, it will receive the signals, then it will process among these and then do something in parallel, for which you have a set separate set of signal lines. Good. Now, you can just see that in this particular scheme of asynchronous communication, everything is going as per some specific sequence methodology. 
and if this device happens to be slow now we said the memory instead uh, the slave can also be a device no I mean rather the other way a device can also be a slave right at that instant what is happening in case the device is slow fine it is going to generate the ASIN leisurely if it is fast it is going to respond fast. So, look for M scene, generate S scene, look for S scene assertion, do something, generate M scene, then uh, sorry, negate M scene and then do something and negate S scene. Now, this particular scheme allows this asynchronous communication in an interlocked manner, right? The two things get interlocked, and as this goes on other activities also can go on over another set of signal lines. Now, all these signal lines together form the bus. Okay? So, that is some that is just to give you some idea about asynchronous transfer. Okay? Now, let us take a quick look at the synchronous transfer. We had talked about uh, asynchronous bus. Let us also take a look at the synchronous bus. Now, recall I was ta while talking about the processor memory interaction, I said essentially it is synchronous bus, but then we also know that it is a proprietary bus in the sense everything that is about the processor speed, the memory okay, response, everything is known a prior it is known well ahead, but uh, and so we can have a synchronous thing and wherever full synchronization I mean uh, wherever continuous transfer is not possible, wherever you have to skip a few clock cycles uh, you introduce wait states, right? Good, but how to do it in the case you have the in case the bus has to support the I O transfer also, because we saw that in the case of I O devices you have a range going from the slowest to, to the fastest device and we do not know a priori okay, how, uh, how to, uh, what will be the speed and maybe uh, after uh, a few years of uh, system usage something new will come and so on. So, how is this particular thing to be done? Okay. There is only one way in which you can cater for this uh, wide uh, uh, spectrum of IOs, okay, uh, data transfer rates and still hold on to a synchronous bus. What is that? You already know about it. That is, what is it that uh, we were doing when we found that the CPU was not fast enough? We said I O is fast, memory can respond fast, but unfortunately it is the processor which becomes a bottleneck. What is it we were doing? We are trying to throw away the processor and then bring in a new, a fresh DMA controller. Okay? Similar thing you would find here too. In other words, uh, wherever you want to support, okay the conventional asynchronous thing provide for that also. Now, these are just different boards, okay? you call them as uh, maybe let us say single board computer, okay? two single board computers. You can always have uh, say two connectors to each of these. Okay? You can connect say one set like this and another set like this. You can have possibly a synchronous bus that is a conventional one here and on this particular one have the synchronous one. So, supposing these are single board computers. Okay. they sit on this buses appropriately. That is you have asynchronous bus that is also supported 
and then wherever there is a need you also support the synchronous. Okay. In fact, this uh, multibus 2 specifically Intel multibus 2 follows this pattern. Okay, good. Now, what is how do we synchronize? You know, this is important because we do not know at what rate this is transmitting and what rate this is receiving. So, just put it a single board computer. For instance, you can have a separate, uh, say, an I/O controller board instead of an SBC, an I/O controller board taking care of the I/O. So. If this is transmitting at one rate and if this is transmitting at another rate, that is main problem is it not for us here. How do we do it? So, the best way of doing it is the slowest one take that, okay? the slowest device take it and then suppose <coughs> this is the controller for the device then introduce some buffering arrangement here right similarly have the buffering arrangement the other one now this may be a slow one this may be a fast one that doesn't matter and then provide a dma okay feature that is direct memory access feature here. So, what you do is let this particular controller or computer assemble all the data right and make use of the DMA controller to pass it on at some standard rate because synchronous means it must be synchronized to some standard rate. A standard rate not directly to the device or to the CPU for that matter, whatever it may be. Just from this buffer pass on to this buffer, make use of the DMA controller. Right? So, in other words, if you have something, put them all together and pass it on. We are quite familiar with this, no? Where? It is something like a passing mail from one station to another station, one city to another city, <laughs> right? The post office has collected mails and put them in a post bag and pass it on. Agreed? The same way here too. These mails may be coming at a different rate, different speed, of course, in different places, that is a different thing. So, collect them all in one place and 1230 means okay, 1230 go and clear whatever that is there and pass it on, put it in a train which leaves 1232 and move it on, something like that. Same way here too. So, as far as the transmission over the bus is concerned, you maintain the synchronization. Really speaking, at this end, that is at the computer end or the controller end, they still continue at their own speeds. So, it is only with the bus. So, just the trick is just that. So, you buffer them and then over the bus you transfer at a fixed rate, synchronize. So, basically what is needed is information that the buffer has data or it does not have data. Okay, the buffer is full or empty. So, that information is needed. Okay, and once that is there, just pass. In fact, this is in fact called a message passing. Okay, that is you, you do not talk about uh, signals at this level. Why? Because signal will be at a very low level. So, you collect all the information and packet that information and then pass it on as a message and at this bus level there is no problem. Mainly it is the DMA and the buffering takes care of the varying speeds of this. 
So, essentially this is the uh, idea in the synchronization. Okay? So, that is what it is. So, really we are not taking care of the uh, individual problems or individual speed variations associated okay, with these various things. And here you set, define a set of standard hmm, communication protocols or standard uh, set of standard, uh, I will just say steps. Okay. <coughs> the sequence in which what should follow what and so on and so forth. So, with this result what happens is whichever thing is ready can assert the bus as a and then become a master and then it can pass on and there are uh, other things also we can go on doing it. For instance, one of these uh, cards can be the master. In fact, it is happening in case of multibus too. One of the thing is always in a specific slot and keeps looking at okay, the various things that are there and they would keep sending commands to the other things and configure them also into whatever way it wants and then it will keep monitoring it and then in which case it becomes uh, something like a centralized control. Okay. Centralized control. For instance, uh, it can send the command and then uh, make uh, this particular thing work once as a say a slave processor and some other time as a master processor and so on. It is possible. Okay. So, that is uh, precisely the trick behind the whole thing. In fact, we are not, uh, 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 in fact, uh, <coughs> missing any, in fact, we are not, uh, uh, I should say, we are not, uh, in fact, to introduce any innovative thing in this, correct? There is no innovation in this. The simple act of buffering and bunching and passing on, that is it. In other words, you remember what all uh, we used to say earlier. In the case of I O interface, the I O interface will take care of all the problems associated with the device. So, that at the bus end, something uniform can be seen. The same thing here too, there is no difference in that. In fact, we have to go into the details of uh, the this uh, bus signals means we have to really go into the details of each a specific bus because it varies widely, but overall this is the idea. Okay? So, that is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous bus.